Hello everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to do some no-line watercoloring with the beautiful flowers from the Bouquet Builder 5 stamp set, and I'm going to use my Tombow dual brush pens to color. This is the Bouquet Builder 5 combo set, so it comes with the Bouquet Builder 5 stamp set in the front, and in the back is the Bouquet Builder 5 matching dies on their own magnetic sheet. I pulled off the largest stamp with the biggest grouping of flowers from the set and mounted it here on my Misty, and I'm going to ink it up in a Distress Ink, this is Antique Linen, a very light color, and stamp it onto some Bristol paper. This is Strathmore Bristol paper, and I am inking this up and stamping it several times because it is a very light ink, which makes it great for no line coloring, but a little difficult to see. And I actually did ink this up and stamp this four times so it was a, the lines are really bold and so I could see them. I now have a couple Tombow Dual Brush Pens colors and the colors I'm using are on screen so you can follow along. I'm starting with my lightest pink for this biggest flower in this bouquet which I'm calling a rose and I color with my marker directly to paper about a halfway up the petal starting at the base of the petal where the petal meets the center of the flower and after I color about halfway I'll grab my paintbrush pick up a small amount of water I've actually sprayed the water down onto my water media mat that way I can just pick up a, a small droplet of water and then use that damp brush to activate that ink from the marker and color like stretch that ink over the petal and that creates a nice gradation on the petal. Now it's a little soft and not quite as bold and vibrant as I wanted so I have a darker color here, a kind of a medium color and again the colors on screen so you can follow along. I believe this is 885 and again starting at the base of the petal coloring about halfway again maybe a little less this time and then with my damp brush I'll blend out that color and stretch it out a little bit. I do think about where light is shining when I work on these petals or should I say where what would be in shadow and I'll try to make the petals that are behind other petals kind of in the background a little bit a little bit darker red so I might color those more with that red get more of that red onto the petal than I would now I'm moving on to my darkest red and I'm just gonna color just for these top petals the ones that are hitting getting the most light I'll just use a little bit of that red at the very base where the petal meets the center and then for those back petals I'll use definitely more of that red to kind of make them darker and any part like some of these petals are overlapping the other petals just a little bit and I will definitely make sure that where those two petals kind of meet where the top petal kind of overlaps the other I'll make that little area really dark with that red. Now I'm going to do the center here. I have three really light kind of yellow colors picked out. The center was really simple. I just kind of colored it with my lightest, blended out a little bit, took a little darker yellow, made that the very center, and then added some details with kind of an orange color, just some little dots to kind of make that orange. And that actually finishes my rose. And I will repeat that coloring process for the other rose, but I decided to go ahead and move on to, I believe this is a sweet pea flower, and I'm coloring it kind of purple here. I'm again starting with my lightest purple, and again at the base of the petal, kind of where the petal meets the center of the flower, and then I blended it out with that damp brush. You can see I also scribbled some of that light color onto my mat and picked it up. I do that sometimes when the color doesn't seem to stretch as far as I want it to or is not as bold as I'd like it to be. Um, I'll pick up color from the mat and then apply it on to my paper. So that's another way to kind of color with these Tombow dual brush pens. You don't always have to color with the marker directly to paper and then blend out. You can also kind of color, get that ink onto your mat and pick it up. That's why I really love using the mat with these um, Tombow dual brush pens. And I did finish those sweet pea flowers up with kind of a maroony purple color and kind of added some warmness to those petals and that color was a bit darker than that light purple. I'm now moving on to these berries. I first colored the whole berry with a yellow and now I'm just blending that yellow out a little bit, just kind of softening a little. Then I have a darker yellow here and I'm just adding a shadow to the bottom side of the kind of sphere of the berry and then I will again after I get that down I'll grab my damp brush and kind of soften the transition between that yellow and that darker yellow and that will actually finish up my berries. Just use two colors for them, pretty simple and it goes really fast and that little shadow will really kind of create that look of roundness. I'm now going to move on to some leaves. 
or rather leaves and stems of the sweet pea flowers or whatever I decide is, I think is part of the sweet pea flowers. So I actually colored the whole stem and a portion of the leaf with this light minty green. I then scribbled a little bit of that green down onto the map because this is such a light color. It's harder to get these lighter colors to kind of stretch a large area like that big leaf on this sweet pea stem. And so I picked it up and kind of blended it over that leaf. Now I've grabbed a darker color and applied a small amount to the base of the leaf and a little bit even to this stem and this is going to just provide that like shadow and really make that leaf look a little bit uh, curved and add some nice shadow or contrast on that stem as well. And I did as well scribble that uh, darker green down onto my mat and I'm picking it up here to kind of blend it out to help that transition over the leaf a little be a little bit more smooth and I repeated that process for all of the sweet pea leaves and stems and now moving on to a different grouping of leaves I decided I didn't want all the leaves to be the same colors so for these leaves I'm using a different combo of green I started with 126 which is kind of like an olivey green and I colored the stem and the leaf again just in the same manner I colored the sweet pea leaves with the lighter color. I colored a whole stem and then the base of the leaf with that lighter color and then blended it out. And then I moved to a darker color and I actually for this darker color decided that I would just scribble it down onto the mat and then pick it up and add it to my uh, leaves and stems. Uh, this dark color is really kind of dark and I would have like lost all of that olivey color and I didn't want to have it, these leaves be so dark so that's why I chose to uh, scribble it onto the mat and then pick it up because I can really be more careful about how much of that color is applied to the leaf. Like, this is definitely the more, um, it's a slower way, but it's definitely the more cautious way to kind of color in your leaves. So I am just about done here. I've went ahead and finished all of the leaves and now I'm just adding, just taking my marker directly to paper, coloring in the stem of these berries. And I did grab the stamps up and bring it a little bit closer to me because I was having a hard time seeing what was stem and what wasn't and I just referred to the stamps that to help me kind of hatch out where that stems were for or where those stems were for the berries. I went ahead and die cut the flowers out with the matching die as well as a piece of white craft foam out with the matching die. This craft foam is going to add some dimension. Uh, this grouping of flowers is a little big for my A2 card so I decided to trim this little portion off. By trimming it off I did have a little bit of the remaining stem or leaf still visible so I'm just covering that up with a little bit of white gel pen. You can see that kind of just that little bit going over that little bit of green completely hit it and now I'm going to adhere my watercolored flowers onto the craft foam die cut and then once I get that stuck I will trim off that last little bit of white craft foam that same little well, it's the craft foam that goes to that those two leaves that I trimmed off of the water coloring. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit more glue here just to make sure that leaf is really stuck down to the craft foam before I trim so I don't accidentally trim more away than I want. And then just trim that real quickly with my scissors. And that will complete my flower, so I'll set that aside. And I'll now move on to my background. I have an A2 panel here um, of white cardstock that's 110 weight. I'm going to use some Distress Oxides to ink blend. I'm starting with Fossilized Amber. And then I move on to ripe persimmon and then I'll finish up the lower third here with candied apple. This is actually a Christina Werner combo. It is beautiful. She has great videos. I'm sure if you, you most of you have probably seen them already, but if you haven't, you definitely want to check out her, her um, background combos or her distress ink combos, oxides combos. They're really great. So I just quickly blended that with my mini ink blending tools and then I dried it completely because I'm now going to do some heat embossing on this and I don't want that embossing powder to stick to that thoroughly ink blended background so I did dry it first with my heat gun. Now I have my misty here and the background panel in my misty and my flowers here just to help me arrange the sentiment here. This sentiment is from the Big Dots sentiment stamp set and I am going, once I get it kind of positioned, I'll place, I will put down some anti-static powder. Then I will grab my Versamark ink, ink up my sentiment, and then stamp it. And then I am going to put on some gold embossing powder, tap off the excess, and then I will heat set this with my heat gun. 
And once I finish with that sentiment, I actually have everything ready to kind of put together my card. I'm going to adhere this background panel with some liquid glue down onto an A2 top folding card base made from 110 pound white cardstock. Then I'll grab my dimensional flowers here, add some liquid glue to the back side of these, but I actually don't add the glue to the really spindly portions of the leaves. I only added it to the very center of the bouquet because I wanted those leaves and on the outside to just kind of be free and have a kind of float away from the uh, background panel. Now I'm adding some crystals here. These are gold sparkle crystals from Studio Katya and once I stuck them down my card is finished. I'll look at the camera here so you can get a good look at the no line coloring on this beautiful bouquet five uh, grouping of flowers. Really pretty. Love the different kind of flowers here. Love the, the sweet pea flower. I think that's a really sweet flower, especially with that rose. And I like the berries in combination as well. And then we have that beautiful ink blended background with the distress oxides and that sweet sentiment from the Big Dots stamp set. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram or check out my blog, which is shannon.wordpress.com. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.